In this lecture, we'll be examining the events surrounding the Burr Conspiracy, a puzzling uh, series of actions by former Vice President Aaron Burr that continues to fascinate historians today and that had significant effects on the development of the new state of Ohio. Let's begin with some brief background information on Aaron Burr. Uh, Aaron Burr served as a Continental Army officer in the Revolutionary War. After the war, Burr transitioned into a career as a lawyer and a politician. He served for two terms in the New York State Assembly, and he was later appointed New York State Attorney General. Burr's next political office was as a U.S. Senator from New York from 1791 to 1797. Aaron Burr's career peaked when he was elected Vice President of the United States in 1800. This was the era before the 12th Amendment, and at the time, the electors in the Electoral College voted for both president and vice president. An Electoral College tie of 73 to 73 sent the presidential election to the House of Representatives. It took a, a total of 36 separate votes in the House to break the tie between Burr and Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, of course, becoming the next president. Vice President Aaron Burr uh, split with Jefferson in part due to Jefferson's suspicions that Burr was scheming to keep Jefferson out of the White House in the 1800 election. While Burr may not have been quite the schemer that newspapers and political rivals depicted, nonetheless, Jefferson rarely included Burr in policy decisions in Burr's single term as vice president. Knowing that Jefferson planned to dump him as running mate in the next presidential election in 18. Uh, Burr sought Federalist support in the 1804 New York governor's race. Um, Alexander Hamilton blocked Burr's efforts, and uh, Hamilton ended up fighting a duel with Burr over supposed aspersions Hamilton's father-in-law made about Burr's character. Again, some of which may have been true, some of which may not have been true, but they, uh, uh, the slurs were made against uh, Burr in a series of letters that were publicized. Um, in one of those letters, Burr was described as despicable and dangerous. Uh, Burr insisted that Hamilton um, dissociate himself from them, and Hamilton kind of made a sort of a weaselly statement that uh, sort of disavowed himself, but at the same time kind of said, yeah, well, maybe they're true. Um, in this duel, uh, Burr ended up killing Hamilton, and Burr fled to the Western territories in order to lay low for a little while. This map depicts the various powers competing for control of North America in 1804. The United States had just purchased millions of acres of territory from Napoleon in the Louisiana Purchase. There was some fear that the U.S. would soon be at war with Spain over these new western territories. Burr had long been friends with General James Wilkinson, pictured on this slide. Wilkinson had served in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. He'd also, on two occasions, served as the commanding general of the United States Army. President Jefferson appointed Wilkinson as governor of the Louisiana Territory in 1805. In his western travels, Burr began putting together some schemes, and Wilkinson appears to have at least been knowledgeable of Burr's plans, if not, in fact, direct conspirator. Burr first had a meeting with a diplomat from Britain in Pittsburgh, where he requested a half million dollar loan for his new schemes. Accounts from the time vary, uh, but it appears that Burr was concocting some sort of plan for Western territories to secede and to form a new nation. Uh, many accounts suggest that Burr wanted to a establish an independent empire of the West on a model similar to that that was emerging under the rule of Napoleon in Europe. Burr and Wilkinson at one point seemed to think they could annex Mexico to add to their empire, and they believed the city of New Orleans would be the capital of the new country. The map on this slide shows some of the most significant places that Burr uh, visited in his western tours. At various stops along the way, Burr gave speeches, recruited volunteers for various functions, and uh, sort of laid the groundwork for his future plans. At some point, Wilkinson either changed his mind about the conspiracy or, if you believe his version, he was all along intending to turn in Burr as a traitor. 
Wilkinson tipped off the Jefferson administration that Burr planned to meet with an influential lawyer and politician named Harmon Blennerhassett, who lived on a mansion on an island in the Ohio River. This is an aerial view of Blennerhassett Island today, which is part of the state of West Virginia now. The bridge in the image connects the cities of Parkersburg, West Virginia, which would be to your left, and Belpre, Ohio, to your right. Burr convinced Blennerhassett to finance a small fleet of riverboats just south in Marietta, Ohio. President Jefferson, who had been alerted to a November 1806 meeting between Burr and Blennerhassett, sent word to Ohio Governor Edward Tiffin for assistance in the matter. Tiffin ordered the seizure of Burr's new riverboat fleet, and he called out the Ohio militia to protect against any sort of insurrection. Burr and Blennerhassett uh, both fled, and they were later captured and brought to trial. Burr was tried for treason and other high misdemeanors. Uh, the case, though, was very problematic for prosecutors as the government uh, was not able to prove that the expedition had been military in nature or that he was even directed toward uh, Spanish territory. Uh, Burr, to you know, sort of muddy the waters, also claimed he was just a patriot, fearful of Spanish invasion. Uh, the Burr trial also set an interesting political precedent as well. It showed how much more difficult it would be to use treason charges as a political tool. Um, but in the end, though, uh, Burr's political career was ruined, as was the career of Ohio Senator John Smith, who was friends with Burr and, and probably unwittingly caught up into this um, sordid tale of events. The image on this slide depicts Aaron Burr recruiting frontier militia for his scheme. Um, as a result of the conspiracy in the trial, though, Ohio benefited. It was seen as a protector of the Union by acting promptly. Um, in addition, the physical isolation of the West, especially the state of Ohio, was increasingly seen as a problem. Uh, the conspiracy led to much greater federal support for road and canal projects to improve transportation and communication with Western states and Western territories. Uh, Burr's schemes also resulted in more attention being paid to the frontier as a potential weakness to the Union, a sort of Achilles heel that would become all the more apparent in the War of 1812. This brings to a close our brief look at the Burr Conspiracy and its effects on Ohio.